Hey guys, it's Nate here. Today we're going to go through an advanced data science interview question dealing with window functions. So you'll see window functions commonly being asked during interviews, but you'll also be using a lot of window functions in your day job as a data scientist. So it's really important for you guys to understand how to use them and when to use them and what sort of problems are good candidates to use window functions for. All right, so let's go through one SQL question dealing with window functions. This one's gonna be from Airbnb. And so if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to my channel if you like content like this. All right, so this is a hard question from Airbnb. It's called growth of Airbnb. Estimate the growth of Airbnb each year using the number of hosts registered as the growth metric. The rate of growth is calculated by taking the number of hosts registered in that current year minus the number of hosts registered in the previous year and then divide that by the number of hosts registered in that previous year. So that's the growth metric and then you can multiply by 100 to change that ratio into a percentage. Output the year, number of hosts in the current year, number of hosts in the previous year and then the rate of growth in your output, round the rate of growth to the nearest percent and order the result in ascending order based on the year. All right, so let's take a look at the underlying data to see what columns we can use to figure out the growth of Airbnb. So here's a preview of the data. Um, this looks like a search table here because it's called Airbnb search details and it's essentially user logged searches. If you go all the way to the right, you will see this column here called host since. And this is the date of which a host has registered to become a host on Airbnb. So this is the column we need to find the rate of growth for Airbnb. And so this column alone is all we need to answer this question. So let's start writing out our approach before we start coding. So the first thing we want to do is count the number of hosts by year because the formula for rate of growth is really number of hosts registered in that current year. And if we look at this column again, host since, it gives us the month, date, and year. But all we really want is the year. And then we want to count the number of hosts that we see in that year. So what we can do is count the number of hosts by year, and then uh, in parentheses extract year from date. So one thing to assume in this data set is that even though it's a search table, all of the hosts listed are unique across the table. So we don't need to do any deduplication. And I think the question also assumes that as well. So the next thing we want to do is create a view where we have the year, number of hosts for that year, and then number of hosts for that previous year. We're going to use a window function here. We're going to specifically use a lag function and I'll show you how to use the lag function to find the number of hosts for that previous year. So once we have that view, the third step is to apply the growth rate formula. So that essentially is to calculate the growth rate equation, uh, which is the current year host minus the previous year host divided by the previous year host and then changed into a percentage, all right? So it's a three-step approach to solve this question. It's not overly difficult, but we need to figure out how to apply this window function to be able to quickly count the number of hosts in the previous year. So let's start coding. All right, so the first step is to count the number of hosts by year. So what we're gonna do is just apply a select all. And also, if you look at this host since in this bottom part here. There are values and dates in each of these rows, but I can't be 100% sure of that. So I'm gonna also write where host since is not null. So that's basically just gonna get rid of all of the records where a host registration date isn't populated for that row. So now what we wanna do is use an extract function to extract the year from host since and then we wanna change this or cast host since to a date, data type. So that's gonna extract the year, all right? And then what we wanna do is just count the IDs or count the records. And we're gonna call this as current year host. 
Obviously, we want to group by, and we kind of want to group by this year, but we need to use this extract function here because the way SQL executes once you compile or run this query is that it doesn't actually know this code here as year uh, when it reaches the group by clause. So you have to actually write this whole thing down and put it into the group by. Otherwise, you're going to get an error that says your column does not exist. And then let's just order by year and let's make it ascending. All right, so let's just start with this, see what we get. So we have year here and we have the number of hosts that are registered or that registered in that year. And so number one is done. Number two is create a view where we can have the year, the number of hosts for that year, which we have here. We have the year and we have the current number of hosts. And then we now need to figure out how to get the number of hosts for that previous year. So uh, what, we, what that means is what we want in, the, in this third column here, previous year's host, is that for 2010, we want two. And then 2011, we want uh, the value of four as the third column. And then 2012, we want the value of nine in this, in this row right here. All right. So in order to do that, we're going to apply the lag function. All right, so this is going to be a subquery, and I'm going to now write select star from, this is my subquery here, let's just call it A, and it's going to be year, and then current year host, and now we apply the lag function. So we want the previous year's host, or previous year's count of hosts. So that's going to be lag. We're going to use the current year host, but we'll lag it by one. And so what that, is, that means is we are going to take the previous row and use that value, all right? And then we'll do over, and we'll just order by year. And we'll call this as previous year host. So let me show you what that looks like. All right, so this is exactly what we want, right? So for 2010, we have four hosts that registered. The previous year, we had two, right? And so this two got put into this column right here. And so this two corresponds to the previous year's count of hosts. And it's the same thing if we just go all the way down. 2011, we find that we have nine hosts registered, but the previous year we had four hosts. So this four actually now goes here. So now when we apply the equation for the growth rate, we have all the values we need on every single row, which makes the coding much easier in SQL. Because SQL is much more efficient when all of the values are found on each row. All right, so next we apply the growth rate formula. So this whole thing here is actually going to be another subquery. So we'll call this subquery B. So in the growth rate formula, we'll, we'll have year, we'll have current year host, and we'll also have previous year host and then we'll apply the growth rate formula which is essentially current year host minus the previous year host and then divided by the previous year host. Uh, what we'll do is we'll cast this as a float because this right here this numerator is a integer and then this denominator is also an integer. So if we do that, let's just see what we get. So we get something here, right? We get ratios. We don't have percentages yet. In order to get a percentage, what we want to do is multiply this by 100. Now we have percentages. And then the question also asks us to round to the nearest percentage. And then we'll name this rate of growth. So we have rate of growth here. Obviously, the first year, we're going to have nulls because we can't calculate a growth rate from uh, just one year's worth of data. Uh, so really the second row is when you're going to start seeing the, the growth rate being populated in this column. So if we check the solution, our solution is correct. And so that's how you apply a window function to a SQL question. Um, this sort of a question also when you are trying to compare one year's value with the last year's value or with the previous year's value. That's actually a common question that you'd get in an interview or a common question that you'd try to solve for on your day job. And so you would always want to use a window function to make your coding and your calculations much easier. So that's it for today. If you like this type of content, please subscribe. To